there's a lot of things I love about this spot. First of all, being, you know, coming from a jiu-jitsu background, I want to be a human boa constrictor, and this is kind of a robotic boa constrictor. I, and I love the fact that he's trying something new. This thing's 14 feet long, and he wants to encapsulate the other one. Because tires are chewable, the torsional spinners on speed is Fucking ready to go Been standing here blankly for an hour Can't say goodbye or hello It's like solitary confinement Just needs someone to hold I'm not as brave as I'm portrayed I need to be told to be bold Coming in hot, I'm alone No support, pack my bags And alone to the airport I hope they board up my room And keep it empty Cause filling my space ain't that damn easy My frontier waits I'm a soldier it's solo Leaving all the past shit down below Moving out, I've grown our combat robot, Smee These motors were awesome Because they are so torquey And so, um so reliable. They are small, but they never actually ran into heat problems with heat or anything else. A lot of teams said that we'd run into problems with um, the, the, the motors getting too hot, but they never actually did. They held up wonderfully considering how small they are compared to the robot itself. We only needed two of them to drive the whole thing, which is a lot less than a lot of other teams use, but the reason that it worked out for us is because these motors are super torquey. They are only 190 kb, which is a lot less than other brushless motors, which means we don't really need giant gearboxes on them. A lot of teams will run uh, really high reduction gearboxes and all sorts of complicated chains and different things, which means that they're losing a lot of power in getting the power to the wheels. We didn't need to do that, we just had one gear driving, driving the gears that were on the wheels, which is super efficient and super lightweight, which meant we weren't really losing a lot of energy to heat in the gearbox or anywhere else. That is the big advantage of these kind of skateboard style motors is because they are designed just with a belt in mind, one belt and one stage reduction. So they're perfect for combat robots because skateboards have to hold up to a lot of abuse and they go similar speeds to combat robots, like 20 miles an hour-ish is what we were doing in the BattleBots. Um, and that's perfect for a skateboard as well, unless you want to go faster, which... This is the inside of the motor. Uh, this is where all of the fanciness lives. It's in these, all the windings here, and you can see the sensor here. Uh, we didn't need to run the motors in censored mode, we actually ran sensorless the whole time, and that worked great, which is a surprise, because you'd think that you'd need censored mode with such little reduction, but there was enough torque to get the thing moving even without it. And we like to run sensorless because, even though the sensors actually didn't break on the drive motors, you still don't want to rely on anything that you don't need to rely on, which is why we ran sensorless as much as possible. So, these motors held up and they never actually stopped the whole time at BattleBots, which is awesome. However, there is some things that can go wrong. For instance, if you look inside the motor itself, we actually lost a magnet right here. Um, that happened on a couple of our motors, and while it never actually stopped it, you can see where the magnet inside was scraping and grinding here, so we swapped those motors out at the end of each fight, but they never actually killed the motor. I'm sure we lost some efficiency when it happened, but it's a testament to how well built this part of the motor is, the fact that it never broke. Now, a lot of teams will take this part and they will glue these magnets in with some kind of epoxy to, um, to make sure that they can move less and so they're better supported and they hopefully won't break. Now, we didn't do that because I was just curious to see how it worked out. I mean, these motors seemed well built and we thought, hey, let's just see what happens. And to be honest, I don't regret that. I think that you don't necessarily need to. Um, however, in the future, Flip Sky, uh, in the future, <laughs> at the time, we didn't, um, we didn't have access to Flip Sky's new Battle Hardened motors, which are basically the same motor as this, but with a lot more epoxy holding these magnets in, which is something that I think is going to be a huge advantage next time. That means that you're not going to have to go in like a lot of teams do and, and glue things beforehand. You can just buy the motor, it'll be ready to go, and you can throw it in your robot, which is definitely something that you're looking for when you have a quick turnaround time and you want to get out as quickly as possible. I've, um, I've actually been electric skateboarding for about five years, and I would definitely go with these motors now, having seen how well they held up to a lot of abuse in the BattleBox. The BattleBot, uh, BattleBot show puts a lot of strain on everything that you put in your robot, and the fact that we never lost one of these motors, as small as they are, and as hard as we were pushing them at 12S, um, meaning like 53 volts, is a testament to how well, well they're built. And we're definitely gonna go back to Flip Sky again in the future, and perhaps with bigger motors, but these were held up perfectly, and I would definitely recommend them to anyone else. Let the bot battle begin, and here we go. Sharko on the attack. Oh, let's see what Smee 
can do, trying to wrap his way around, but he can't get all the way around that big shark. Sharko trying to attack the center of Smee, and I think they're just too pliable there, Chris. Yeah, it's so interesting because Sharko is so big that Smee, even with its size and reach, cannot wrap all the way around its opponent. Yeah, that's right. The, the shape of Sharko is making it very difficult for Smee to do anything to it. Meantime, Sharko trying to use that tail to smack Smee and snap it in two, which would make it Smee and then E. <laughs> <laughs> Both teams still feeling each other out. Lots of contact so far, but no real pain dished out by either side. Yeah, Chris, in a match like this, it just takes one shot to get the judges' attention and jump ahead in the damage category. Now, you can see Sharko's tires have been chewed up a little. Those horizontal spinners on Smear just nibbling away at that giant shark. And now Smee has Sharko backed into a corner. It's like a giant piece of spaghetti on wheels, Kenny. And right now, Sharko's the meatball, Chris. All right, here we go. Yeah, go. I'll tell you this, though. Sharko's crushing it on the dance floor. <laughs> I mean, he's the dude in the corner just... He doesn't care. He doesn't have a partner. <laughs> just having fun. <laughs> yeah. Go do your fish thing. Go. <laughs> now Sharko's got those jaws open, chomping away at Smee, but it... Kind of like when your food falls off your fork before it gets to your face, Kenny. Dude, our weapons are good, man. Yeah, and Sharko's just not able to get low enough to really get a good clamp on Smee. That was the, the closest he's been so far. And on the other end, Smee just wants to give him a hug so he can keep chewing up those tires. As we reach the 30-second mark, it's time to see if somebody, somebody can make a push. Sharko trying to find its way. One of the more bizarre fights we've seen in quite some time, Kenny. Two bots that are pretty amazing to look at, but have had some trouble getting it in gear here in fight number one. Yeah, some really cool technology in play here. Both teams just need to get it dialed in. We are under 10 seconds to go. Oh, that was good. And this one is going to go the distance. I can't believe those weapons survived. So now it will be in the hands of the judges.